So welcome to the BELC Information and Library Commons website. For those of you, you're probably familiar with this already, but for those newbies, welcome. Uh, the library site is a pretty difficult site to navigate. I will be the first to admit there's a lot of stuff here. And for a typical first year student and even a graduate student, it is hard to find a lot of information on this site. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the easiest, quickest, best ways to access stuff. Now, traditionally, most students will just do the app search, app search. Um, many of you guys are already familiar with this, so I want you to go ahead and I want you to type in a topic, any topic whatsoever, and then click search. This is how a typical student here at App States begins their library research. Well, you know what, I'll take that back. Typically they start at Google and then a professor tells them they have to use the library and then they come to the site. The app search is designed to be like a Google search because we are so conditioned to use Google. I mean, look at it, it looks like a Google bar. You type in one thing, you click send and it sends you to a page that looks like this, which gives you a lot of information. So what's cool about this using the app search site is that it gives you information on books and articles. So when you guys are looking on the left hand side, you can do a refine by book or ebook. So say you've got this student on the chat or a student who comes to the front desk and says, you know, I got this assignment where I have to have five articles and I have to have five books. You can refine by clicking on those links. So that's kind of a cool way to narrow down your search too. You can also narrow down your search using publication date, location, language, um, additional suggestions. So basically this site is it's kind of cooler than Google in the sense that it does give you the chance to break down. It does give you a chance to, to look at or think beyond maybe the first keyword that you came up with. Um, so in this example, you know, there's a lot of information we have on surfing, quite a few information um, through electronic resources. But within your search, I want you to click on a click on book and then just look at the books. And this is going to be cool for those of you that maybe are not familiar with this, but click on any one of the titles. So I'm going to click on surfing about music. It's going to tell me exactly where it's located. And this is important for you guys, too, because you're going to get students going. So what floor is that? And I'm not sure what library that's at. So it tells you right here where it's available. So you know it's gonna be at the music stacks. Here's the call numbers. So that's gonna be the location of the book in the library. Um, it's gonna give you a summary. It's also gonna let you know if, whether or not it's been checked out. So that is actually really cool. Um, no, 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 hold on, darn it. I thought I had some cool little tools, but I don't. But see, as you can see, you can see that it's not checked out. You can even map it. So by clicking on this link, you can print out a map for the student on Bob or one of the other printers. Um, you can also click the request it title. This is for students that want to put stuff on hold, but guys, check out right here at the bottom on this blue dot. Now, this is something that I highly recommend you share with the students, but if you click the cite this title button, it'll give you the citation. And that's super important because when you guys are doing your own research, you have to cite, and trust me, the students that you're helping, they have to do that too. So all the books when using the, the library website is gonna have that cite this title. Um, highlight it, screen share it, whatever, but definitely remember where that is because that's gonna be really important later when you guys are doing your own research and it certainly helps the students so they can automatically know exactly how to cite the title, but again, to know where the location of the items are in the library. So really that's how you can search for books. There's, a, there's another way you can look for books too that's um, a little more complicated than app search. And the way to do that is instead of clicking on your search right here on the button or on the, the bar, you can go to classic catalog and then you can do a search by title, journal title, author, subject, and then you can search beyond the Appalachian State Library. So you guys are familiar that we get books from ASU and UNCA and, and, and Western Carolina. And so you can limit your search to just those places as well. But this is just another way of doing a book search. So again, I'm gonna type in surfing. This is going to give me all the same information, however, it's just going to limit it to books and ebooks. So it's just kind of another way to keep the articles out of your search. So again, it tells you the location, where it's located on the in the library, whether or not it's been checked out. 
If you click the title, once again, it will bring you to a page where you can click the citation. So pretty amazing. Here's cite this title again. Um, you can request it. You can. Um, this is how st students put stuff on hold. So when you guys are forced to go out and get those books for us lazy people that just don't want to walk up to the third floor, this is the way to do it. So uh, just again, another way of looking at the books through the site. Now you can also do a search through app search through articles only, which this one also just covers articles, but it doesn't cover everything. And that's something that's really important for you guys to understand. Most libraries have adopted this kind of Google centric way of searching because that's what you guys are used to. That's what students do. I mean, that's what faculty do. I mean, there's so many faculty that don't even come to the library. They're like, go to Google Scholar. You'll, you can get whatever you want out of there, which I think is crazy talk, but most of them, most of them, it, it, they, that's just what they do. But um, when you use the app search button, so when you're using just this, you're actually not searching everything the library has. All you're searching is a small part of it. And there's a whole lot of complicated reasoning behind it that I know John Abbott, who's like the library genius, could probably explain in five words or less. But for some reason, it does not search everything. And when you are a graduate student or a freshman or just anybody, you're going to want to get as much information as you can possibly get because you guys don't want to spend all your time just doing research. This is boom, you know, there's hiking to be done and, and right water rafting and fly fishing and, and hanging out at the tap room. There's more fun to be had than just doing research. So there are other little ways that you can get around the library website to get all of the information that you need that is not, that will cover everything. So I have to say that my favorite way to search articles and databases is this link right here. And what's cool, what's hard about this is that it's not intuitive. Like you don't look at that link and think, oh yeah, that's the one. That's where I'm going to get all of these articles. No, you think, okay, I'm going to type in here and get it. Um, but trust me, be familiar with this one. Hopefully we're going to make it bigger and more awesome um, when we start changing the website. But I want everyone to click on this link. Now, you guys, shout out, let me know what majors you are. Type it in the chat box. Don't be shy. I want to get some ideas. Oh, okay, MBA, awesome. Exercise science, Kanisha, very cool. Counting, okay, good deal. All right, good, good. So you can see on this page that we actually have a list. Oh, chemistry, Lauren, girl, you must be smart. Okay, <laughs> that was my worst class ever. Um, as you can see on the website, you we have actually the databases linked by subject as well. Um, oh, child development, very cool, Mary Ashley. So as you can see, you can literally go directly to your subject that you major in and get a list of databases. So for example, um, we've got uh, chemistry. So if you were to go down and click chemistry, you're gonna find that John Wiswell here, really cool picture of them, um, has linked all of our databases that just pertain to chemistry and science. So what this does and what this means for you is that you are actually going just to the databases that subscribe to your majors. So you're not having to do that typical Google search where you type in your subject, you get 63 million hits, and maybe only five links are actually what you need. What this does is this takes away that 63 million and gives you just quote, the five links that you need. It is very specific to your major. You are, if you have a very specific project that you're working on that is just strictly chemically, chemi chemistry related, this would be the way to go. Because what you'll do is you'll search through all of these databases and, and type in your keywords and get all of the information that pertain to just chemistry. So that's a really cool kind of shortcut of going through all the rest of the library databases that we subscribe to. We spend a lot of money on our databases and we have databases in every subject of the universe. And when you're doing a search using app search, you're actually struggling through all of those other databases that don't quite have anything to do with your particular topic. So it's a good way to narrow down your searches just by going directly to your subject. Now, if you are doing uh, a paper by type, say you need imaging and music and video, but now be very careful folks, when you have students that are taking out Google images or they're using YouTube, there's a lot of issues with copyright and infringement and you could be plagiarizing and stealing. So it's very important when you're working on your projects 
or when you're working on your um, your papers that you use copyright protected images, music, and video if you are not using your own. So this is a good way to kind of link to all of that protected educational video images and music databases that we have. So if you've got a student who comes up to the desk and they're like, you know, I need some art images, they could go to art store, um, maybe they're music majors and they want to get some information about classical music, dance, all of that stuff, they can go to this link and get all of those sites that they have access to. So really important, um, especially in terms of, of vis visual materials, but you do get a lot of questions for those. Statistics and data is another really great site because you do get, like say you need to know the statistics of how many records Jay-Z sold last year for his Magna Carta record, which I didn't think was all that great, but a lot of people bought it. So you can actually get that kind of information right here on the site. I like his earlier stuff. That's just me personally. But um, Bureau of Justice Statistics, um, statistics for in the environment, statistics for health, economic stuff, all of that is right here on this one site. So you can literally just kind of peruse this link and get information of the statistical nature. Um, guys, spare yourself the time, and unless you have the exact website out there on the internet for stats, go through here because the statistics that you get out of these databases are 100% accurate. There have been more careers and that have fallen due to faulty statistics and faulty information. So don't risk it. Um, unless you are an expert or unless you're working with Russell or any one of the other librarians on the team that can let you know what's good and what's bad, um, use this site. Encourage your colleagues and other students to use the library because this stuff is for real and it is legitimate and you're saving yourself a lot of time. So some Relevant databases that I think are really cool that I love to show people. Um, I want everyone over here to click on A. So please click on A. And I want you to scroll down until you see, where is it at? Um, Ancestry Library. So click on Ancestry Library. This is your free um, subscription to Ancestry.com. So I let my dad use this one. Oh, of course, I'm sitting right there with them, and I'm helping him out, not just giving him my username and password, so don't do that. But you can, um, you have access to Ancestry.com, so if you want to search, if you're not a history major, you're just curious about your family, or you're curious about where you came from, this is a really amazing site, so you can get census records information. Uh, my dad and I looked up my uncle, who was in World War I, who was unfortunately gassed, during World War One, and we found his military records. So it's a lot of fun, and it's a cool site that a lot of people don't know that we have. So definitely um, play around with this when you have some time, when you're up at the front desk, because it's more than, you know, just, just kind of FYI, guys. We have a lot of amazing resources here that you could actually enjoy more than surfing Facebook all day or checking out your Instagram account. I mean, I know it's important to do that because I at least check mine twice, but there's a lot of really great sites and databases and information that we use in the library. And the more y'all play with this when you're at the front desk, um, the more helpful you can be to students and the more helpful you can actually be to yourself because there is a lot of great information that once y'all graduate, you will not have access to. So use it now. Um, another really amazing database that I'm particularly fond of is Mango. Mango is hilarious and it is a free, um, well it's hilarious in the sense that you can learn pirate, but it's free language learning software. It's like Rosetta Stone except better because it's free. Um, there's over 63 languages that you can learn using Mango and you have access to this just by, you know, being a student or working in the library. So for instance, you can learn any one of these languages. Um, my daughter and I have a good time with this one. So you want to learn Pirate, click Get Started. You can download this on your iPad, guys. You can download this on your phone. Um, you can download this on your desktop. Super easy to use, so play around with it when you're at work. Um, if you're not interested in Pirate, there are 63 other languages, but here's how it works. Here's the conversation we'll be studying in this chapter. Blow me down, the ship's becalmed. Belay your carousing and haul winds smartly. Oh, my duty to you, Captain. The ship be now a-sailing at full speed. Listen carefully. 
Blow me down, the ship's becalmed. Means, oh my gosh, the ship isn't moving. Now let's learn, oh my gosh. Blow me down. <laughs> Blow me down. Is an expression of shock or surprise. There are a lot of colorful pirate phrases that mean the same thing, and we'll learn a couple more soon. Be careful using it referring to someone else, though. To blow a man down means to kill him. So, okay, that's kind of goofy and fun, and chances are you probably won't ever need to speak pirate, but many students, especially you guys, most you guys actually, are traveling all over the place. Um, so it's a good turn, it's a very amazing resource if you need to, like say you're getting ready to go to France for the semester, you can learn a little bit of French, you can learn a little bit of Portuguese. Um, I'm taking my dad on a big trip to Ireland, so I was kind of playing around with the Gaelic and the Irish and um, also France, which I'm not even gonna attempt because my French accent's horrible. But again, it's a really cool resource that you can use and it's a great resource for you to refer to other students that are traveling as well. And how about the international students? Because many, many of them, even though they do speak very good English, um, they always wanna brush up. So this is a really cool resource that you guys have available to you for free as students here um, that you can play around with and become used to and can share with other students here in the library because you will get a lot of questions about how to access the databases, how to do a good search, and yes you will refer most of these questions to the main library or the library faculty and the library staff, but certainly you can help them as well especially if you're already familiar with them. Now. One more other database I want to make you guys familiar with is called CQ Researcher. And to me, this is the academic Wikipedia. This is the site to go to. Um, many of us use Wikipedia because it's amazing. You want to learn about something. Maybe you're watching a movie and that actress looks really cool and you want to know who she is. You type in their name and it gives you all this information. The thing is, when you're using Wikipedia as an academic resource, a lot of your instructors will frown on it because anybody can go into Wikipedia and write whatever they want about whoever they want. So it's not considered peer-reviewed. It's not considered scholarly. It is, however, a great place to start. So if you're not sure you know, how to write about something, you know, go to it. But another option that you have is called CQ Researcher. So if you guys click on C, and scroll down here it is cq researcher this is a really amazing site for when you're doing those comparison papers or you're needing pros and cons of specific subjects so maybe you're in a class and you guys are talking about the death penalty um, what's interesting about this site is that it will give you all of the lowdown of anything everything you've ever wanted to know about the death penalty so you can see the chronology about it. You can get, um, you can go into more specifics. So maybe you're interested in wrongful convictions. Uh, just as an example, it gives you an introduction, an overview, a background. What is the current situation? What are the pros and cons of the of wrongful convictions? Although I'm pretty sure there isn't a pro. But anyway, um, it has all of this information, and as you can see, these are written by experts in the field. Watch this. Right up here at the top of every page is the Cite Now button. So you can copy and paste your citation and get all your information and use it for your paper. This way you're not citing Wikipedia, which your instructor will immediately tell you to go back and find something else. Um, this is a legitimate site and it gives you all of the information that you know that is written by experts. So if you get some kind of crazy reference question, like I got to write this paper about global warming, and I'm not sure where to start, this is your go-to database. Highly recommend it, use it. Tell them, don't go to Wikipedia, go here. Um, and it gives you everything you've ever wanted to know. You can write an entire paper just using this particular site, and your instructors will be thrilled that you use the library. So, basically that's everything in terms of doing a database search, checking out different types of databases, our, probably our most popular will be any of the EBSCOhost databases or Academic Search Complete. So if you click on A and click on Academic Search Complete, Academic Search Complete is literally, I, in my opinion, it is like the academic Google because it covers everything. So I want you all to do a search, you know, type in a subject.
Okay, so I just typed in one topic. Go to advanced search. Pretend that you're writing a paper. Um, come up with a different key, another keyword that's going to describe your paper. So let me think. Surfing. I'm going to say championships. Not that I've ever been in one. Um, and then click search. So what that's done is that has narrowed down my search. So before when I just typed in surfing, I had like 5,000 hits. When I add another word that I want to write about, it brings me down to 76. You can take it a step further too on the left hand side and just maybe you want to limit to full text. Full text is the entire article. There's nothing more annoying than doing research and finding the perfect article only to get a citation. So by clicking on full text, this means I'm going to get the entire article. But that's also dropped down my search to 38. Um, what's cool is there's pictures. Um, Russell, we need some pictures of you up here. Um, got all you can do your search by publication date. So if you want to just get surfing championship information for the last 10 years, you can narrow down your search that way. But anyway, so click on a title. Okay, so this is going to give me kind of an abstract. It's going to tell me where the um, article came from. Here's the whole article right here. Um, I can actually play it. Let's see if it'll work for me. Ready for the next oh. wave. Section. Surfing. Kelly Slater. See the Australian accent. Kelly Slater is winning world titles again. A record nine and counting and planning. Wonder what that one sounds like. Okay, I'm digressing. But anyway, it's a great resource for um, if you get students that Ready are hearing. Ready for the next wave. Oh yeah. Section. The Australian's way better. So it is a good way for hearing impaired students. Um, it's good for you if you're, you know. You're doing research and maybe you just want to hear it as opposed to reading it. I mean, whatever, whatever suits you, but it does have that option. And also too, when using the databases, especially EBSCOhost, if you guys look right here on the right hand side, you'll see that cite button. Again, APA citation provided for you. So uh, just a cool little shortcut in helping you guys to do your research. Uh, there's a lot more about using EBSCOhost and the other databases that I could go into. But because you guys are all newbies, I think it's just important for you to get an overview. But I will tell you that we do offer monthly online workshops about how to use specific databases and how to narrow down your searches and stuff. But in terms of the kind of questions that you guys are going to get, this is really the way to go. So again, that's the databases. That's how to search the databases, how to use them. There's a lot of really other great pertinent information on the library website that you want to be familiar with. You know, you can do links to journal and magazine titles. So say you got a student that's like, um, I need this article from a specific journal or a specific magazine. And you can type in that magazine or journal to see if we have it. And so we have several copies of Billboard in various different locations. So you can just choose one and you can go straight to the issue. So it's literally like opening up the electronic issue of Billboard. So that's how you would search for the electronic versions of journals and magazines. Um, only if you've got somebody that's got to get something out of a specific article. And it's way easier to do a search using this than to go through app search and have to go through all of the other sites. All right. Cool. A couple other things just to make you aware of. Uh, the library chat box is pretty much on every page, so this is where you get a lot of your chat questions. Get help is also very important when using the website. We have our Ask a Librarian page. If you click on that, this is all the different ways that you can access um, or how the students can access contacting the library. Our guide how-to videos are very important because if you've got, say you've got a chat and there's a student asking a question about special collections, you can actually link them to these helpful videos. You can send the videos through the chat, they'll be able to watch it and get the information they need. You're going to get a lot of questions from UCO students and English 1000 students, so this is a good way to get directly to that site. So say uh, we had a UCO student that was having trouble getting into the quiz in their As You Learn page. So you went here to how to videos, we clicked on English 1000, links to the quiz, you can click on that, give it to them. 
So become familiar with the website, guys, when you're at the front desk. Again, don't waste all your time on Facebook and stuff. That stuff's not going anywhere. Um, pretend that you're a student coming in for help, and you're going to want to talk to somebody who's not going to be like, oh, man, you know, dude, I don't know anything about that. Um, why don't you ask so-and-so? Know that information. Give them that information. Let them have a positive experience, because I will tell you this. I have been doing this for years, and students get more out of students than out of librarians telling them what to do. And Russell, I know you can back me up on this, but students like talking to other students. So the more knowledgeable you are about this information, the better. And I will tell you a secret. Um, working in the library is very cool, not just because you guys get free food and parties, but it is a marketable skill. Trust me, I've had more students who majored in film and recording arts and archeology span and music and law that ended up being a librarian because of the time that they worked at the library. And that's not to say that we're going to push you guys into the librarianship because that's not the intention, but the skills that you gain working in the library, you can take anywhere. I mean, just the basic research skills, how to find something, you will be a superhero. I'm not kidding with the kind of information that you would be able to get just by working here for a semester or two and becoming familiar with these resources because researchers they make a killing. And within your majors, especially those of you that are in chemistry and exercise science and accounting, that's hardcore stuff. So learning, knowing how to research, knowing how to, you know, crack the code, learning how to get all the information that you need is going to be imperative. And it's going to have and having these skills to do that are going to put you ahead of the game when you start applying for jobs because you're it's not enough that you're graduating with a degree. They want you to have experience. And you guys have chosen to work in a location where you can get all kinds of research skills, and that's going to make you highly marketable. So if you get nothing else out of this presentation, it's that you are going to be very, very marketable with the information that you learn from here. So please keep that in mind when you guys are like killing time and you're bored because you've stacked every book. Um, Become familiar with this stuff. Play with this stuff because, again, this is marketable skill that you can put on your resume and people will be impressed. Trust me. Um, I have gotten several jobs that I never thought I would ever get because I had this background in research and this background in library science. So become familiar with this website. Become an expert if you can because you can take this information with you and go very, very far. So that's my, my plug. Yay, rah, rah, library, because it is awesome, and that's why I'm here. Um, one more thing just to show you guys, you will get a lot of distance education students that are like, oh, my gosh, I need help. Right here is their link. Click on distance education, and I got to plug it because I am the distance education librarian. This is going to be all of the information that the distance education students are going to want to know. So become familiar with this, too, not just because I think it's the coolest one, but because you do get a lot of DE students because in the nature of DE, they do their work at night. These folks have jobs. They have families. They're taking classes. They're doing homework at 2, 3 in the morning. Um, it's crazy, and their schedules are crazy. You guys are smart to knock it out while you're young. But you, we will get a lot of distance education questions. So become familiar with this link because this will give them the information that they need. And then you're not having to say, well, let me give you the DE librarian's contact information and she'll get back to you. Never, never, never say that if you can. Don't just point them in the right direction because trust me, you guys, every, every answer to every question that you're going to get is on this site. It's here, um, unless they're crazy and they're just asking for really weird stuff. And then you might want to direct them to David or Daniel or Russell. But um, be familiar with the website. 